uh, the the cancer gen cancer genome uh, the cancer genome atlas, as the name suggested, uh, has been focusing on genomic identifying genomic events, and did not include a large scale proteomics profiling. Um, uh, the um, Golden Miller and Eileen Liu from um, MD Anderson, they just started uh, uh, started to measuring pro uh, protein, protein level and the phosphor protein levels in TCGA sample. And um, we, we, we kind of get this data and we are playing around with it and uh, we try to correlate those protein, proteomics data in uh, phosphor uh, with those genomics alterations. And, um, uh, I, I should point out that this presentation is more about uh, working in progress, and we are just started to scratch the surface of this interesting data. Um, this one. So uh, RPPA it stands for reverse phase protein array, and uh, it's a uh, High throughput proteomics technique to measure protein, protein level and phosphoprotein level uh, in relatively a cost, a relatively in, uh, relatively in expensive way. And um, each slide uh, is developed with a single antibody and could contain up to 1,000 samples. Uh, with controls, and there are currently about 300 validated antibodies available. Uh, the Elin Lu and the Golden Miller from MD Anderson, they have generated those RPPA data uh, so far in six cancer types uh, for more than 2,000 samples. And, uh, including like about 200 antibodies, uh, um, among which uh, 50 antibodies are phosphor phosphorylation antibodies. Here I list a few. Uh, for protein antibodies, um, they're including like P10, TP53, ERAR, AKT, et cetera. For phosphoprotein, uh, phosphoprotein antibodies, including uh, AKT, EGFR, uh, B2, MAPK, et cetera. And uh, we should note that uh, several of the genes have both protein level and phosphoprotein level. For, for example, the B 2 B 3 AKT, and MPK. And this is a pathway overview of the antibodies. Uh, the, the pink and orange uh, dot indicate that the particular gene have uh, phosphor antibody, uh, phosphor antibody and the protein antibody respectively. And uh, from this view, it's clear that uh, the antibodies actually covers uh, this covers a lot of members in those interesting, uh, important signaling pathways in cancer. And uh, one might doubt that if this technique, RPPA, if it is working for, uh, for TCG samples. And um, uh, in the next few slides, I will just uh, br uh, briefly give some examples that uh, can confirm our expectation from the data. And here is the RB2. Uh, here's a uh, the correlation between HERB2 mRNA protein level and the phosphor phosphorylation level. And uh, uh, from the, the slides, we can see that the uh, RB2 phosphorylation level is highly correlated with RB2 mRNA expression. And RB2 phosphorylation level is also correlated with the RB2 protein level. And uh, we also study. Uh, compare the ER and GATA3 protein level uh, in breast cancer subtypes. As expected, the protein level of uh, basal-like and HER2 
is significantly lower than the Lumina samples, and the same with the uh, GATA3 protein level. And uh, as Giovanni have mentioned, and uh, P10 deletion and uh, underexpression are highly correlated with uh, ATK phosphorylation. Actually, it's across not not it's across multiple cancers. And uh, so, I hope that at this point, I. Uh, uh, we we, we uh, I kind of we 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 have more knowledge about this uh, RPPA. We have some confidence in the RPPA technology, and uh, we want to dig into this uh, AKT phosphorylation in breast cancer. So the AKT activation and the phosphorylation has been found in many cancer type, and uh, phospho AKT has diverse targets regulating uh, a lot of important processes. In cancer, and uh, phospho AKT contributes to breast cancer progression and confers resistance to uh, conventional therapies. Uh, inhibiting phospho AKT could be beneficial to some patients. Okay, uh, this is a um, box plot and histogram for two important phosphorylation site level in AKT. And uh, clearly we can see that there is a long tail for both of the uh, phosphorylation site that has a higher phosphorylation level. The question is what genomic even causes AKT activation in breast tumors. Uh, from our uh, pathway overview, we have some usual suspects, including like P10, KRAS, B2, and uh, PGFR1, and uh, PIK3 CA. Uh, as expect, as, as I have shown, and the P10 deletion and loss of expression is highly associated with phospho AKT, and, but not P10 mutation. And for those KRAS, LB2, F, FGFR1, and uh, PIK3CA, actually, they are not uh, highly associated with uh, high AKT phosphorylation level. So uh, we wanted to know what other genomic event can explain AKT phosphorylation in breast cancer. Uh, to approach that, we separate the uh, samples into AKT high phosphorylation and AKT low phosphorylation and do and perform enrichment uh, uh, tests of all gistic region of interest and frequently mutated genes. And we found a couple of interesting copy number changes, uh, this two, and uh, a few mutations that are uh, significant frequently altered in AKT high, a, a, a with, with them, in examples with higher phosphorylation of AKT. And we actually test off this genomics events and find that CAMP 1D application and AKT E17K mutation may be related to higher uh, AKT phosphorylation level. Uh, again, I should mention, uh, again, this is just a surface. Uh, we just scratched the surface of uh, those uh, great data. And we think that the data is very interesting and uh, definitely worthwhile digging more. And we found that it's, uh, we, we have observed very good correlation between genomics and proteomics data on the level of individual genes and proteins. And, but uh, 
the downstream effects of protein level and phosphorus protein level it, uh, is hard to link to genomic events. For in the case of the AKT phosphorylation, we can explain some, but not all. Uh, we're in the progress to systematically um, investigate those ge genomic events combinations, and uh, f um, for all antibodies. And we think that correlations between phosphorylation data may help elucidate activate signaling pathways. Uh, this RPPA data has been integrated in the CBIO GDAC portal, and with that, I would like to thank um, Nikki, Giovanni, Ethan, Ben, and Chris from MSKCC, and uh, Gordon, Gordon Mills, Yilin Lu, and the RPPA team from M MD Anderson. And thanks for your attention. Thank you.